DIY Euro rack. I think it's fair to say that a lot of folks are kind of freaked out about the idea of actually making their own modules, as in soldering and an assumption that you need to have a knowledge of electronics in order to just get started, I think puts a lot of people off and it really shouldn't. I don't have any real electronics knowledge beyond what I've been able to infer by reading lots of instruction manuals. But that hasn't stopped me making modules. And this Arya Optodist, this 4MS rotating clock divider and the breakout, this Turing machine and this peg, which took a little while. Oh, and this plague bearer. And most recently, the radio music. What you may not have realized is there's a number of manufacturers that make really awesome kits kits which you buy and contain all of the electronical parts that you need to actually assemble these modules. So the process of assembling them is really a lot like Lego. It's just a question of you following the instructions that they give you to the letter and just being very careful and fastidious and making sure that you do put the right parts into the right holes and then you solder them into place. Now, that brings up a scary thing. Soldering which I think puts a lot of people off. I've read a number of people are like, yeah, I'd like a, you know, radio music, but mm, soldering. Soldering is easy. I am an idiot and I can do it. I also have really shaky hands. That's not me just putting it on. I have like a kind of crazy LFO built into my hands and I can do it. So you can too. Soldering is a really basic skill and it's very easy to pick it up. What I recommend that you do is go to YouTube. You're probably there right now and then do a search for how to solder. You'll find a bunch of videos made by people way cleverer than me who will show you the basic techniques and principles. I think the most important things that I can stress from my own experience, don't get a soldering iron that's too hot, as in get one that's between sort of 20 and 30 watts, that should be fine. Don't buy a gas one or anything weird like that. Buy an electric one, just a very simple, and it won't cost you an arm and a leg. Just a simple electronic soldering iron, and you can buy little kits that have the iron and a little cradle that you slot it into, uh, and the solder itself. Get one with a chisel tip. The other thing is to be nerdily fastidious about keeping your soldering iron clean. Be a dweeb about it, because if your soldering iron gets oxidized, as in it sort of dries and becomes like rusted, the heat will not conduct between the tip and the part. Um, and unfortunately that leads to it not soldering. So what you do is you dab a little blob of solder onto the end to kind of tin the tip and then wipe it on the thing. And then you solder the part. And then what I actually do is I do dab a little blob on. I just leave like a live blob and then stick it very carefully into the thing. You're probably not supposed to do that, but that's what I do. And my tips don't tend to oxidize. You do also need some of these snips, little snippers. Um, and you use those to cut the legs of the um, components off. So a soldering iron, some snippers should cost you not more than about 30 quid. But you're armed with the knowledge of what's in the YouTube videos and you've got the soldering iron, but how the hell do you learn? You don't want to potentially damage your module kit, which you may have just paid, you know, 70 quid for. So what do you do? Well, you go back to Maplin's or the place where you've got your soldering iron and in there they sell more than just um, the irons. They sell kits. They sell kits very much like module kits, but that are kind of toy hobbyist kits. And there's a load of fun ones. It's like, you know, crazy noisemakers and weird little sort of um, burglar alarms and stuff. And all these kits are really cheap. They're like £10, um, no more than 15 for a kit. And again, they've got all the bits inside them. So you buy them, you unpack them, and it's like a little training run for what you'll do with your module. And the worst thing that can happen happen is that you bugger up your 10 pound 15 pound kit like who cares you've learned to solder you're practicing and it doesn't really matter armed with your newfound knowledge you're going to want to seek out all of the awesome modules that you can build now um, and there's tons in the uk however we're very well served there is a company called thonk.co.uk whose express purpose is actually selling diy modular stuff this month i bought the radio music kit and built it it took about an evening. I would say it is an okay first project. There are some small components that you would have to solder. So I would just say, perhaps look at the Turing machine first, um, which is a little bit of a bigger thing, a bit more spread out, and it's a little bit easier to solder, I would say. Both of those are awesome modules. The Turing machine, especially, I've used it tons. But to be honest, they actually work really well together. Both highly recommended. So 
I got my radio music and I soldered it up. And using my knowledge that I had gained initially by building a toy kits, which is exactly what I did, I did buy toy kits myself and built them so that I felt confident when I first soldered a module. The first one I made was the rotating clock divider by 4MS. And it's an advantage almost to being a newbie because you check everything many times because you doubt yourself, which is actually really good because it's easier to make mistakes when you think you know what you're doing. You go too fast. You don't double check things. So just be fastidious. It's very straightforward. I followed the instructions from the PDF. Solder, solder, solder. Here I am soldering. I'm enjoying my soldering time, having a cup of tea, listening to podcasts. And at the end of it, we get an awesome new module. In fact, it's worth pointing out that the radio music didn't work when I first um, did it. What I'd done is I'd accidentally sold two parts together, and that is because I did not check my work thoroughly. So I don't practice what I preach, um, but you should. <laughs> so please double check your work. Uh, it doesn't break it, it just didn't work properly. I eventually found that I'd soldered two parts together that shouldn't have been. I reflowed the solder and kind of jiggled them until they just split apart, and then it worked perfectly. So here we are with our new radio music. Radio music plays back samples, but it does it in a very unusual way. It works like a radio. So your samples are always playing back in this thing. It's as if it is a radio and all your sounds are a radio station and they're all being broadcast at the same time and you tune into them with your station dial. So. This is a bank of um, purported spirit recordings that I pilfered off the internet. That was a constant breaking through. That's, that's just been fantastic. Yes. And that would just loop then. So this sound... Creepy. So this is looping. And if I turn the dial... You see that we have a little indicator of the level that's being output. Weird. Um, and I have banks of these. On the oscilloscope. Oh. The capacitors are set. <laughs> Which is down. This is very it's meta. This is actually the sound of um, a YouTube demo of um, the I'll iSchool F Mabenzi modules. Settings. I love this and demo. I'll just go down through the four forces from the top down to the bottom. What a dude. However, we have a start dial and a reset button. So if I put the start dial here and push reset. It resets from the point that we set on the start dial. And if I change that... We have a... We have a... By and large, I seem to have made more mistakes than any others. I'm so we can change the start point. By and large... By and large... By and large... By and large... I... And you'll note that there is a CV input for start and station and reset. So we can CV control the selection of stations, so the twiddling of that dial, and we can CV control the start time, where it starts playing when we reset. Um, and to change bank, we do have to hold this, yeah, and you go through the banks. Uh, you can't CV control that. So it's very simple, and you end up with banks. Banks are full of sounds, and the sounds don't just have to be short, little one-shot things. They can be enormous tracts of audio. They can be, you know, an hour long or more. So you can end up with a whole library of interesting sounds. There's some really cool things you can do with this thing. I mean, just, well, here's a point. Um, Here's a musical instrument, Clouds, which is um, a texture synthesizer we looked at in a previous video, uh, an issue. And the Clouds is a sample module and it loves audio. So it loves to receive sound, audio, be it music, speech, all kinds of things. And then you can texturize and freeze those things. It is a perfect pairing with this because this is just a ready source of audio. I don't then have to fire up my computer, go through my folders, find something. I can just twist the dial and I get some audio that I can stick into clouds. Very cool. But even just by itself, it can do some awesome things. So first. Self-knowledge. Mm. Some will make it. 
with or without LSD. <laughs> the others pray for acts of God, crises, power failure. So you can imagine this sounds excellent no with a little bit of um, stuff on it. We see symmetrically canoe on northern Canadian spring reverb also. Stars in the night sky repeatedly blown. Forested shores possess Our hearings pass in the dream. Will be one hour's work. That's fine. Now, take a deep chest breath. Scientific and technological means. Claims Dr. Frankenstein's monster returns every 100 years. So, that gives me an idea. It is incredibly fun changing the station in real time. So, what we'll do is the very first thing that I kind of was excited to try with this module, which is um, kind of emulating the tape music of the 60s, where people would cut up um, fragments of um, recordings and rearrange them into new sort of collage. We can do this uh, in real time, um, because obviously if we have a bank full of different um, wave files, full of different speech, um, nothing at all stops me um, from feeding the station input a random voltage. And what I'm going to do is come to another DIY product from the same company. This is called the Turing Machine, and you'll have seen it in videos before. This is actually a kit, and I built this some time ago. It's proved to be an incredibly useful module. It's very straightforward to build. It was not the first thing I built, um, which is a 4MS um, rotating clock divider. Absolutely incredibly highly recommended also. But what we can do with the Turing machine is feed it a LFO. Um, and in this case, um, let me just give it the output of the Atlantis is modulator here. And if I feed it into the clock input, then you see little lights start to light up here. You can just see them in a little screen. And basically, this creates random voltages, and it does them on the clock pulse. So whenever I create a clock pulse, it queues up random voltages, which eventually emerge here. We can change the scaling of them with a tiny little twisty dial here, so I can change how loudly or quietly those random voltages are outputted. But what's awesome about the Turing machine is that you know, a random generator that just makes um, randomness forever is perhaps not as interesting as what this can do, which is loop its randomness. So um, what happens is when you turn this dial um, from one side or the other, it loops a different amount of the randomness which was currently playing in its buffer. So if it does something interesting that you like, you can quickly jam that to the right or the left and it will capture that element and repeat and repeat and repeat. And then you can dial this back into the center. And as you start to get over this kind of point, it starts to reintroduce randomness until you have it at the midway point, And then it's totally random again. So it's a random generator, which can be clocked, which is very useful, and which can be looped which is incredibly useful. So I use this thing in combination with a pitch quantizer to just make melodies. Like you can just put it into a pitch quantizer. So what it outputs is um, quantized to pitch, obviously it isn't by default. Um, and it will just merrily create random melodies for you. Um, but you can loop it. So when it makes a little hook, you get to keep it and then you can record that. So um, this is the perfect pairing for the station input because what I want is a repeatable and interesting um, random source, like a sample and hold generator, which would also be a fine choice. If I plug the output of this into, oh, let's hear it first. Where's my audio output? Here it is. So audio out. One, take a deep, deep breath. So now let's take the randomness and, and stick it into the station input. You feel better than ever before in your life. I do, your don't I? Your body is relaxed. And then Two, I'm going to have the three, scale output, three, which is set to zero. Caused by sensitivity. It strengthens your teeth and gums for strong smile. I'm in good. Sorry. Make like state called hip from the quality. Get speaking voice. Moving towards. Slow it down. Come. Done. We now return you to the music of Ramon Raquello playing. Concentric circle. My favorite. So, the randomness 
loops and creates live kind of tape collage from our bank. And then we can try different banks. Ace. Speed it up. Loop it. What's cool is it's looping the same pattern each time, but because of the nature of the way this thing works, it doesn't reset every time unless we specifically trigger the reset. So it's triggering the same stations, but each one is moved on a little bit. Start to introduce randomness. Back in. Loop it again. I'm glad I'm recording this. This is definitely a module you need to be recording at all times with. start resetting it. So, it acts just like a sort of traditional looping sampler, but it does just loop, and we can reset it on command by pushing a little button, and obviously we can feed it a voltage too. Um, but we can't kind of time stretch it, it's very simple, although that's not actually true. There's a cool patch um, which Tom Whitwell, who's the chappy who designed this thing, uh, came up with, which is a time stretch kind of thing. And there's some settings for the little settings file that he recommends, which I've applied for this, um, just to sort of improve the sound of things. And so what I do is I take the um, output of a square wave, 
which I'm generating with the make noise mass down here. And I stick it into the reset and it will go like that. And what it's doing is just resetting it very fast. So of course, when you sweep the start time, it kind of scrubs through the sample and it kind of makes a time stretch sound. So what I have here is the second channel of maths and we're just using a very slow CV just to scrub through it. You can do it forwards and backwards. It sounds gritty as hell, but it does work. Finally, let's try using this as a kind of textural generator, augmenting a synthesizer patch. We can fill up the sound banks with all kinds of audio, things like ambience, nature, street recordings, and sounds of tape hiss, uh, sounds of vinyl crackle, things like this. We can get these off of sites like Freesound, or obviously uh, we can record them ourselves. So you can imagine these textures, feed them into your voices, into your melodic generators, pair them up with your oscillators and stick them into a mixer and then feed them into filters um, and you get kind of textural sounds. What I'm going to do. Of course, um, what's even more interesting is that not all of these are just tape hiss. And then we can use that integrated as part of a part of a synth patch. So if I take the gate out of the um, Metropolis. Now it repeats. And this is being gated by the Atlantis because I'm running this through the Atlantis and then and then I'm running it through the RYO Optodist, another DIY module which I can distort it with Repeating the envelope on the Atlantis. So I can just add this kind of sampley textural interest to an otherwise fairly straightforward synth sound. And it can be synced to our melody. This is actually a part of a recording which is supposed to be a recording of someone telephoning from the afterlife.
É isso.